Greetings students and welcome back to another video on tensors. In this lesson we're going to go over the definition of contravariant and covariant tensors. In the previous few videos we went over contravariant and covariant tensors of rank 1, or vectors, but in this video we're going to go over the definitions for higher rank tensors. Now in order to define contravariant and covariant tensors we'll start with a few assumptions. We'll assume that V is a matrix field, and in this context a matrix field is basically a mathematical object which gives you a matrix for every point over a region in space. So if I feed V some coordinates, it's going to give me a matrix for those coordinates. Because V is a matrix field, we can think of it as being composed of a bunch of scalar fields or functions put together into a matrix. Specifically, we'll assume that V is composed of n by n scalar fields which are all defined over a region U in Rn n is the dimensionality of the space. So essentially, V is a matrix consisting of a bunch of scalar fields defined over U put together as the components of the matrix. Let's suppose that the components of V in the Xi coordinate system are given by V super Ij, and let's also suppose that when we apply a transformation to take us from the Xi coordinate system to the Xi bar coordinate system, the components of V become V super Ij bar. Now the assumptions we had above involved V being a matrix field, but a matrix is not a tensor, I've mentioned that repeatedly throughout the series. In order for V to be a tensor, it is not enough for V to simply be a matrix, V must also follow certain transformation rules. I'm gonna write what I had for my second video in this series to remind you of those rules. First of all, the whole of V must be invariant under a change of coordinates, so the combination of the components of V and the basis vector specifying V must be invariant. In addition, under a coordinate transformation, the components of V must change according to a special set of formulae. Specifically, for the matrix field V to be a contravariant tensor of rank 2, its components V super Ij and V super Ij bar in the Xi bar coordinate system must obey the following law of transformation. Note that R and S are dummy indices on the right hand side, so they're being summed over from 1 to n. Meanwhile, I and J are free indices that run from 1 to n. What about covariant tensors? Well, the exact same assumptions apply, the only differences are that the indices are now in the subscript instead of the superscript, and that we're using W as the matrix field instead of V. Again, right now W is a matrix field, not a tensor. In order for W to be a tensor, the whole of W must be invariant under a change of coordinates, and in order for the matrix field W to be a covariant tensor, its components must obey the following law of transformation, with the partial derivatives being flipped relative to the law of transformation of the contravariant tensor. Again, R and S are dummy indices on the right hand side so they're being summed over from 1 to n. Meanwhile, I and J are free indices that run from 1 to n. Alright, so we've covered contravariant and covariant tensors of rank 2, but there's a third type of tensor that can be thought of as a tensor which has both contravariant and covariant character. It's called a mixed tensor. Again, the same assumptions apply, but now we've got a superscript and subscript as our indices. We're also using a different matrix field Z. I've already said this multiple times now, but I'll say it again. Right now, with the assumptions that we have, Z is a matrix field, not a tensor. In order for Z to be a tensor, the whole of Z must be invariant under a change of coordinates, and in order for the matrix field Z to be a mixed tensor of rank 2, its components must obey the following law of transformation. Intuitively, this law should make sense. The partial derivative corresponding to the contravariant index has the barred coordinate up top, and the partial derivative corresponding to the covariant index has the barred coordinate at the bottom. R and S are dummy indices on the right hand side, so they're being summed over from 1 to n, and I and J are free indices that run from 1 to n. So now that we've discussed the different types of rank 2 tensors, I want to take a quick detour and talk about the different ranks. Suppose I have a tensor V with P contravariant indices and Q covariant indices. The rank of V is the sum of the number of contravariant indices, or the contravariant rank, and the number of covariant indices, or covariant rank. Another way we can specify the rank of V is to call it a P, Q tensor. The first number in this ordered pair would be the contravariant rank, the number of contravariant indices in V. The second number is the covariant rank, the number of covariant indices in V. For example, suppose I had a tensor A with components A super IJ. I could specify A as a 2-0 tensor, a contravariant tensor of rank 2. 
If my tensor A had components A sub IJ, it would be specified as a 0, 2 tensor, a covariant tensor of rank 2. Finally, if A was a mixed tensor of rank 2, it would be specified as a 1, 1 tensor, a tensor with a contravariant rank of 1 and a covariant rank of 1. Again, the total rank of A is the sum of the contravariant and covariant ranks. Just because the contravariant rank is 1 doesn't mean the tensor is the rank 1 tensor. You have to add both the contravariant and covariant ranks to get the full rank of the tensor. So now that we've covered ranks of tensors, let's define a general tensor. We'll assume that V is now an array field. And when I say array field, I mean a mathematical object that gives you an array for every point in space over which that object is defined. This array could be one-dimensional, like a vector, two-dimensional, like a matrix, or higher-dimensional, like a three-dimensional, four-dimensional, m-dimensional array, etc. This array field is composed of n to the power m scalar fields, or functions defined over a region u in Rn. Suppose that in the regular Xi coordinate system, the components of V look like this, with P superscript indices and Q subscript indices, and that P plus Q equals M. We'll also suppose that after our coordinate transformation to the barred coordinate system, the components look like this. Again, with the assumptions we have right now, V is an array field, not a tensor. In order for V to be a tensor, the whole of V must be invariant under a change of coordinates, and in order for the array field V to be a tensor of rank M, with a contravariant rank of P and a covariant rank of Q, its components must obey the following law of transformation. Again, the partial derivatives corresponding to the contravariant indices have the barred coordinate up top, and the partial derivatives corresponding to the covariant indices have the barred coordinate at the bottom. The R's and the S's are being summed over from 1 to N, they're dummy indices, while the I's and the J's are free indices that run from 1 to N. Now that we've gone through basic tensor definitions, we'll briefly discuss some simple tensor operations, particularly summation and scalar multiplication. We'll start by supposing we have two tensors S and T. The tensor S has a contravariant rank of P, so it has P indices in the superscript, and it has a covariant rank of Q, so it has Q indices in the subscript. On the other hand, the tensor T has a contravariant rank of R and a covariant rank of S. We'll cover simple operations involving S and T in this video, starting with summation and scalar multiplication. Now if you want to perform summation between two tensors, you have to make sure that the covariant and contravariant ranks are consistent. If they are consistent, then the sum of the two tensors is just found by summing the individual components. The resulting tensor, S plus T, has the exact same covariant and contravariant rank as the individual tensors, S and T. So it has a contravariant rank of P or R, because P and R are the same, and it has a covariant rank of Q or S, because Q and S are the same. Just for fun, I'm going to very quickly prove this statement. Let's suppose that there's a change in coordinates from Xi to Xi bar via these N equations. I is a free index from 1 to N over here. Under this change of coordinates, the components of the tensors, S and T, have to follow the following laws of transformation by definition. Note that in the transformation law for S, I've replaced the P and Q by R and S because P equals R and Q equals S. The ranks have to be consistent in order to sum two tensors. Now if we add these two transformation laws, here's what we'll get. Since both tensors experience the same coordinate transformation, it stands to reason that these partial derivatives that are all multiplied with each other are the same for both tensors. That's why we can take them common and be left with the following. But this is just the transformation law for the tensor S plus T. To go from the old components to the new components, you multiply by the exact same sequence of partial derivatives as you did for the individual tensors S and T in their respective transformation laws. Therefore, the tensor S plus T is a tensor with the exact same ranks as the individual tensors S and T. By the exact same logic, you can also prove that S minus T is a tensor with the exact same ranks as S and T, just change the pluses to minuses. Let's now talk about scalar multiplication on tensors. Say I have a tensor A with a contravariant rank of P and a covariant rank of Q. In order to multiply A by a scalar phi, I would need to multiply each component of A by phi. The resulting tensor I get, phi times A, has the same ranks as the original tensor A. You can easily prove this. 
The transformation law for the tensor A, which describes what happens to the components of A as we go from the Xi coordinate system to the Xi bar coordinate system, is given by the following. If you multiply this law by the scalar phi, here's what you get. Now, since phi is a scalar, it's invariant. So if phi underwent the coordinate transformation, it would turn out to be the exact same as it was before. The temperature in New York, for instance, doesn't vary. It is of fundamental significance. If you change the coordinate system that you use to determine the location of various landmarks in New York, then the temperature in New York wouldn't change just because you changed that coordinate system. Because of this, we can change the phi on the left-hand side to phi bar, which is essentially the quote-unquote transformed phi. And what we end up with is the transformation law for the tensor phi times A. And because it follows the exact same transformation law that the tensor A did, it follows that the tensor phi times A has the same ranks as the original tensor A, proving our theorem. Now since we've covered the summation and scalar multiplication of tensors, we can combine those two and talk about linear combinations. For linear combinations, if we have a bunch of tensors T1 to Tu that have the same contravariant and covariant ranks, remember, tensors have to have the same ranks in order for you to add them. And if we have these tensors with the same ranks, and if we also have a bunch of scalars from lambda 1 to lambda u, then the linear combination of these tensors, which is lambda 1 t1 plus lambda 2 t2 plus all the way to lambda u t u, this linear combination will also have the same contravariant and covariant ranks as the individual tensors in the linear combination. This is pretty much just an extension of the sum and scalar multiplication theorems we just proved. If the sum of two tensors is a tensor of the same ranks, and if the scalar multiple of a tensor is a tensor with the same ranks, then it should follow that the linear combination of a bunch of tensors of the same ranks is a tensor of the same rank. Anyway, that should do it for this lecture. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. I've linked my Patreon account in the description for you to check out. And that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.